This video is an introduction to the double stroke roll. And if you haven't watched my videos on how to hold the sticks, I suggest you do so. I cover the proper way to hold the sticks naturally in both the match grip and the traditional grip. And in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating both those grips with these exercises. So the thing that makes a double stroke roll good is that it's very clean in that every stroke you make only has two strokes. It's not crunched, it's not buzzed, and they're not somewhere around three or four, but strictly two strokes each. The other thing that makes it very clean is that both those strokes have basically the same volume. Now where drummers fail a lot in this is that they often just bounce the stick and they have the second stroke not have any control behind it and just let it bounce and it ends up being lighter than the first one. Da da, da da. The problem with that is then you have a roll that's top heavy. Da 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 da. And it often doesn't have good time as opposed to a roll where both those strokes are even in sound and it has a much more clean, strong sound throughout. So a lot of people teach the way you develop that is to practice doing two strokes and then raising and doing an accent. And then as you get faster, that accent gets smaller. Now the reason why I don't prescribe that is because when you are rolling fast, you are not doing a raised accent. What you're doing is what I call a snap accent. It's also called a pull-out accent, where you're pulling the stick out of the head. And when you do that, it puts you in position to do the next stroke, as opposed to doing a fast snap, which just really isn't feasible when you're doing that fast. So, in one of my other videos, when I talk about the rebound stroke, I mentioned that stick height determines volume. Whereas if you're going to do an accent, you simply raise the stick. So that's a raise accent. But this method right here, you do not raise the stick. You snap your wrist. So I call it a snap accent. You see that? The stick is not being raised first. I'm also using a little bit of finger there, but not too much. So the way you get started is simply doing that. You do a tap and then a snap. And you do it very slowly so you get used to it. If you find when you're doing this, you're getting kind of stuck in the head, then that means you're pushing down as opposed to snapping up. Jim Chapin describes this as pretending that the drum is hot, like it's the stove. And if you someone dared you to touch it, you wouldn't go like that. You would go like this. You'd get away from it really fast. So you pretend it's hot. The other thing I tell my students is pretend there's a little flea or something, some little bug that's really gross right there. You wouldn't go, you would go, you would snap at it. So that's what you do to get started. You start off very slow. And as you work on this slowly and develop speed, as you get faster, those accents even out. You don't hear them anymore. But what happens is you have two strong strokes, two strong notes, as opposed to Now, a lot of times my students will have a role that sounds like that. Da -da 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 -da. And the goal is to sound more even like that. And so one way you can test how well you're doing 
is your double should sound as clean as singles. So if I did like a five stroke roll, I do it with singles and then doubles. They should sound the same. Doubles, singles, doubles. Now if you do that and it sounds like this, singles and then doubles, that means you're most likely bouncing too much and not controlling enough. Now there's a fine line and a balance here because some people argue doubles are bounced. You're bouncing the stick and that's true. So it's not completely controlled, but it's not a floppy bounce. So it's a controlled bounce. And what you're doing is you're controlling that second note. So if you're going to do this traditional grip, I do a snap like that. Same concept. Then when I close the roll, it's just a slight nudge. So the way you start developing this is very, very slow. Just getting used to that. Then you want to start doing some exercises that uh, challenge you to get that second note to line up on a particular beat. So here's an exercise with the metronome. So what you want to do is have the second note line up with the click. So I'm lining up the second note with both hands. Try it like this. So then you can do it in succession. Remember, start off slow. Notice how I'm doing this. I'm not doing this. That's not going to help me when I get fast. But this will. And then even. Double time. See how subtle? I'll take out the accent and see how it's on the beat. It's nice and even. Another exercise can be, I'll do this without the metronome. So if you do something with an accent on the end, so I'll do this. Triple it one. Triple it one. Now I'm going to do that with doubles. Double, double. And I try to get that to sound exactly the same as the singles. Doubles. Switch hands. Singles. Doubles. Same with traditional grip. So remember, however you want to do this, your ultimate goal is for your doubles to sound as clean as singles. And not this. Okay? So, I have another video coming. How to develop a clean double stroke roll. And that will have further exercises in how to develop a killer clean double stroke roll.